the getaway car they stole ran out of gas. So they're both captured. They're captured and caught with a stolen car. All right, so the police, the DA know that, that, that they both stole the car. So the police put both suspects, both Bonnie and Clyde, in separate interrogation rooms to try to get proof that the two did indeed rob the bank. They, they, they caught him in the, in the stolen car, so they got him on the car theft. So in addition to stealing the car, they're, they're trying to get them to implicate themselves that they did rob the bank. So now, now both suspects are told by the district attorney the following. If you confess to the robbery and, you're, and your partner remains silent, you will get off free and your testimony will be used so that your partner will serve a 20 year jail sentence, okay? Um, if you both confess, you will both serve 10 years of jail time. And if you both last, if you both remain silent, you will be tried for stealing the car because we know you stole it. You were in the, you, you were in stolen property and you will both serve one year sentences, okay? So that, that, those are the things that they were told. So we're gonna list the four possible outcomes. So if Bonnie confesses and Clyde confesses, they're both gonna get served, they're gonna, both gonna serve 10 years in prison for the, for the theft, for the theft. Um, this is, we're gonna fill this in. So if Bonnie confesses and Clyde confesses, they both get 10 years. They both get 10 years. Now, if Bonnie confesses but Clyde stays silent, Bonnie's gonna get zero jail time and, and Clyde is gonna serve 20 years in the big house. This, the third one is if, if Bonnie stays silent but Clyde confesses, now Bonnie is gonna get the 20 years and Clyde goes off scot-free. And now if, if Bonnie stays silent and Clyde stays silent, they're both gonna get one year for the, for the stolen car, for the stolen car, okay? So I need you to note that the, the, we've got some context here. We've got context to this game. I mean, I told you before, if there's no context, we assume the biggest numbers are best. But in this scenario, guys, both players want the small numbers. Both players want the small numbers, okay? So both, they want the small numbers. That's how you play, that's how you, you win this game, okay? Because the number represents how much time they're gonna spend in jail. So the smaller the number, the, the better off they are. The better off they are. Okay, so this is kind of, we kind of flip this from what we saw before, all right? So, so we're gonna use these numbers and we're gonna fill in this payoff matrix. Now, this is just like the ones we did before. Um, we saw those buy matrix payoff matrix C and it looked like this. It was like we had A comma B, C comma D, and we had these in parentheses. We had these in parentheses, and then I'm just making up letters as variables. So you guys know that we've, we've seen this before. We've seen a by matrix matrix. Now, now the only thing different here is that we have now this like, this little slash diagonal, this slash diagonal. Well, um, know that the first numbers were player one, were, were the role players, so that this corresponds to these lower triangles. Kind of looks like a bowling score sheet. The lower triangle goes to, to Bonnie, okay? Th those are her payouts. Now the, the second numbers in our buy matrix, payoff matrix that we saw before, went to player two. Well, in this one, Clyde 
this player too. So the upper right triangle goes to Clyde, all right? So that's the only difference. You haven't seen a payoff matrix like this, but it's, 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 it means the same as this is just slightly designed differently. Um, so, but that's how the, the numbers, that's how the matrices, pay, payoff matrix corresponds. So, so we're gonna do this. So when they, if they both confess, they both get 10 years. They both get 10 years, okay? So they each get assigned 10 years in jail. So now if, if they both stay silent, those are the easy ones to see the, when they both do the same thing. If they both stay silent, they're, they're gonna both get one year, all right? So I usually fill, it, I usually fill in those first because they're the most obvious. Now the other two, you gotta, you gotta match it up. If Bonnie stays silent and Clyde confesses, well, that's the second one. Bonnie stays silent, Clyde confesses. He gets 20 and zero. Bonnie's gonna get the hard time. Clyde gets off scot-free. And then if, if Bonnie confesses and Clyde stays silent, let match it up. So Bonnie gets zero and Clyde gets 20. Okay, so th th that's the payoff matrix. That's the payout, all right? So we gotta figure out whether Bonnie has a dominant strategy here, okay? We have to figure out if Bonnie has a dominant strategy. So and how we do that is we look at how Bonnie responds to Clyde's strategy. So if Clyde confesses Bonnie's choices, remember, remember Bonnie can only look up and down between her rows. She can confess or stay silent. And she wants the small numbers. You guys see that she's going to confess because that's the smaller number. That's what she wants to, win, to play the game. And when Clyde chooses his strategy to stay silent, again, Bonnie can pick between confess and stay silent. You guys see that zero is, is, the, uh, is the one that's gonna win out. She's gonna, she's, she's gonna pick this one. She's gonna pick confess. She's gonna pick confess. So you guys see that Bonnie has a pure strategy. She has a dominant strategy and, that, and that's to confess. So, she, so Bonnie has a dominant strategy to confess because both smaller payouts are, are in that first row for here. And remember, Bonnie's the, the player one. She's the role player. So she has the smaller payouts in her, in her first strategy, in, in row one. All right, well, let's, let's look at Clyde. Clyde, we have to look at what he does when Bonnie chooses that first strategy to confess. So remember, remember Clyde can look right and he can look left, okay? He can pick between confess and stay silent because he's the column player, he's player two. So when Bonnie picks confess, his choices are, are, are 10 years or 20 years. And 10 years is the, is the better, is the cheaper outcome. So he's going to pick confess. He's going to pick confess. Now when Bonnie chooses to stay silent here, Clyde's two outcomes that to pick from is 0 and 1, between 0 and 1. And you guys see that that zero is the smaller payout. So do you see that Clyde also has a dominant strategy, a pure strategy, and his strategy is to confess, is to confess. So because, because that also is where the smaller payouts are for Clyde, it's in column one.
right? So they have a tendency here to confess. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about Nash equilibrium, I, I, want, I want to make a note here. Um, make this a little bigger so I, you can see it. And when we talk about a Nash equilibrium, it was the it was the box that had the best payout for for both parties. It was the box that, that neither player could change their strategy and get a better payoff. So it was it it is what the math tells us human nature is most likely to do. All right? It, it tells us, it's what the math tells us human nature is most likely to do. So we can kind of predict what that really is. All right. So remember, these these are prison sentences. So the best outcome is the smaller number. And in the most again, most of the time we've looked at these games, it's always been the higher number for the better outcomes. So it looks like both Clyde and Bonnie have a dominant strategy, and it looks like they're both going to confess. To, to the robbery, but but is this really the best outcome for them? Is this the best outcome for them? What do you guys think? Well, let's evaluate whether this is truly a Nash equilibrium. Okay, well, you guys see where I circled both numbers in the box one? That's where my Nash equilibrium is. It's in box one. So I highlighted those tens. Well, now, now remember when we looked at a Nash equilibrium, we look at each player. Can that player change their, their, their decision, their strategy, and get a smaller payout? So Bonnie has got the payout 10. If she switches her strategy to stay silent, you guys, that's a bigger number, and, and it's the small numbers that win this game. There's no pressure on her to stay silent. So she is not motivated to, to, to change her strategy. She's not going to, to, to stay silent. She's going to still confess. Now let's look at Clyde. Clyde's payout here is 10. And again, he, he's look, he can look left and he can look right. If he looks right and decides to stay silent, he also is facing that 20 year sentence. So he, human nature, he, he doesn't want to go, he doesn't want the big number. He wants the small numbers. So guys, this is truly a Nash equilibrium. They are, neither one is motivated to change their decision, their strategy, because there's, there's a worse jail time if they do. If they do, questions on that? What I just showed you is pretty much the overview that we talked about when we introduced Nash Equilibrium. <clears throat> so it, yes, it was. It was like neither, neither player could uh, improve The, the box one uh, scenario, is you guys okay if I use that? S scenario. Neither player would be motivated to change it. It's not there. It's not there. So in real life, we can sometimes manage to get beyond dominant strategy to best strategy results. And when we're looking at best strategy results, 
we're, we're talking about a Nash equilibrium. All right? Anybody watch that beautiful mind movie? No, not yet. Because we can even use extra factors like societal pre pressure, peer pressure, organizational pressure, or repetitive play to kind of know how to behave in those scenarios. But when we do this so often with influences around us, we, we, uh, we realize the, the mutual advantages of, I want to say, of cooperation. I'm, I'm running out of room here. Of cooperation. Cooperate. Barely squeeze it in there. So when we do this repetitive play, we can realize the mutual advantages of, of cooperation. You know, I, I can get what I get, you can get what you want to get and we cooperate, and when we both get what we want in the end. So we're gonna talk about this more when we're doing, uh, talking about theory of moves, which we'll probably not get to this, this marking period, but I, I uh, abbreviate it T-O-M, theory of moves. And theory of moves, we're kind of moving around the matrix. We can move around left and right, up and down, and each player, we look at their motivation to change their strategy in theory of moves. So sometimes finding that outcome, it, it can be, be hard. What's that last word in blue? This is the acronym for this little animal, theory of moves, T-O-M. And we're going we're gonna to be looking at that in, uh, in section 15.5, all right, in, this, in, your, in your workbook. It, it's in your workbook. Um, so we're going to look at an example of uh, two football players, Shane Falco and, and Joan, Joe Kingman. The, the two of them are considering using steroids to enhance their performance. If both players choose to use steroids, we have kind of four scenarios here that we got to track and we have to rank too. Um, so if both players choose to use steroids, they will be at equal talent levels, but they will have all the risks of using steroids. Okay, that's the first scenario. The second scenario is if neither player chooses to use steroids, they will be at lower talent level than with the steroids, but will still be equal in ability and will have none of the steroid risks. Okay, and then the next one is uh, is if one player uses steroids, but the other player doesn't, the player with the steroids will have a higher talent level than the other. Okay, so this is kind of counts as two because then you're gonna switch it. We're gonna switch it. Okay, so we're gonna rank these players' options from best to worst. And we're gonna do this in a, in a kind of ordinal scale ranking. Okay, so one through four, you guys have heard this word before, I'm sure. It's, ca it's called ordinal scale. Ordinal scale ranking. Um, it's, not, it's like numbered, your first choice to, to last choice. And in this scenario, we got it flipped. We flipped, we, this, is, this is upside down, this is backwards day. This time, four is our best. Four's our best ranking in our scenario. And we're going to list the four possible outcomes here, and we're going to rank number four is the best. Well, what's the best? Well, the best outcome that we want, because with societal pressure, peer pressure, league pressure in the football league, is for Shane and Joe not to use. So Shane and Joe not use the steroids, all right? That is what we would hope would be their first choice. Yeah. And, and now the, the worst scenario, the, the, the one with the smallest ranking, 
would be them to both use. So that would be the worst scenario. So now, yeah, their, their, their performance is enhanced, but they're still of equal ability. But now they've got all the side effects with using st steroids, okay? Have you, guys, you guys ever heard of Lyle Azedo? He, he died of uh, cancer because of steroid use. He, he was an incredible freak on the football field. He was a defensive linebacker, and the guy was nuts. And so it was, had a lot to do with his steroid use. You know, steroids enhance your performance. It makes you a lot more aggressive and crazy. But the, the problem is it's not safe. It's, the problem is not safe, and then it killed him. He, he died like at age 40, really young age. All right? In this country, what's the people's life expectancy? Like 80, 85? So that, that's half his life was sacrificed because of steroid use. So, so these other scenarios, so the best would be to both not use the steroids. Now, number three best would be for Shane not to use, but, but Joe would use steroids. Okay, Joe would use steroids. I mean, I mean, the scenario is, you know, Joe's going to be a little more aggressive and, and, and talent-wise better, but Shane doesn't want that medical risk. And then this would be reversed. So Joe, we would reverse that for Joe. So Joe's third best would hit for himself not to use but for Shane to use, all right? And, and, then the, and then number two is this is just reversed. This is just reversed that uh, Shane use. And, and Joe, oh, I'm sorry, I should do that the other way. I'll just say use. Use and, and Joe not use. All right? That's, what I, that's how I should do it. And in this one, it would be use and uh, Shane use, or Shane not use. All right. So, so these are the payouts. So I created a scenario, and I assigned an ordinal scale rank to them. So one through four, where four is the best outcome we have. So now we can, we can fill in these payouts into this payoff matrix. This is a real world scenario that we put these payoff numbers next to. So now, I guess I didn't add this, I, I, I should. Um, re remember there's, there's league pressure to not use ster steroids. There's societal pressure to not use steroids. But there, there may be peer pressure. There may be peer pressure to use, use steroids because people think their they're, they're, they're performance is, is enhanced. So this is all over the board in sports. And you really don't know what kind of organization you're in until you're you're in it because a lot of the there's a lot of these rules will get you in trouble so people don't aren't aren't if, if it's a if it's a league that's that's open and has random drug testing then they're going to be um probably there's not going to be much incentive for them to to use steroids because you can get you can lose your job okay so I'm going to put these in. I'm going, to, I'm, going to say, I'm going to declare that Shane is my role player. So Shane is right here. And his strategy is either to use or not use. All right? That's how we play the game. And now <clears throat> Joe is going to be my column player. 
And his strategies are the same. Use steroids or not use. So we're going to put these payoff numbers in here. And I'm just going to make this a little bigger so you, so you guys can see what this matrix looks like. So the easy one is, is, the, is the duplicate. So the best case scenario is when they both don't use. So I can put those down here. So that's 4, comma 4. All right? Those are, that's the best scenario. And then the, the worst scenario is the last one here, and that's, that's the 1, 1. All right? So they both use the payoff is, is less. In this one, they want the big numbers. They want the large numbers in this context. And then the other ones that you just got to match them up. When Shane doesn't use, but Joe uses, so look at not use, Joe uses, well, that's number three for Shane. And for, for Joe, for him to use and Shane not use, that, that's number two for him, okay? That's number two for him. And in this box, it's, it's just the reverse, okay? It's two for, for Shane to use, and it's three for Joe to not use, okay? So there's our payoff matrix. There is our payoff matrix. So, <clears throat> so the, the big numbers are best in this scenario. The big numbers are best. So the big numbers are best, and so we ask the question, what is Shane's dominant strategy? So you guys remember how we did this? We asked the question, well, how does Shane respond to Joe when Joe is going to use? Remember, he wants the big numbers. So Shane is the role player, so he can look up and he can look down. He can pick between use and not use, and he's going to pick the biggest payout, and for him, the biggest payout is that three, is that three. So he's not gonna use, he's not gonna use. So how does Shane respond to Joe when Joe chooses his second strategy not to use? So he, he looks between use and not use, you see the bigger payout is four. And so you see that Shane has a dominant strategy to not use. We also call it dominant strategy. We call that a pure strategy. So what is dominant, what's, what's Shane's dominant strategy? His, his dominant strategy is to not use steroids. All right? So that's where the best payout is for him. So let me circle that. I'm going to circle those bigger payouts for him in a little better color. So we see it. So we see that Shane has a pure strategy. He has a dominant strategy, and that's not to use steroids. So now we look at Joe. How does Joe respond to Shane when Shane decides that he is going to use steroids? Well, what's the bigger payoff for Joe? Remember, Joe can look left and he can look right. He's the column player. He can't look up and down. So if, when he uses, he's got his choices are one or three. And one is the better, or three is the better payout for him. And so he's going to choose not to use. Now when, Ch when Shane decides not to use steroids, this is his second strategy. Joe, again, his choices are between two and four. And four is the bigger payout. So you guys see that Joe also has a dominant strategy. And Joe's dominant strategy is also not to use steroids. All right? So now, remember, how did we recognize whether a box was a Nash equilibrium? Well, it was if both payout numbers were circled in the box, then that was a Nash equilibrium. So you guys see that we do have one? So does this example have a Nash equilibrium? Yes, it does. If so, where? Well, it's it's box four. You guys remember how this is, this is box one, that's box two, 
that's box three, and that is box four. So we have a Nash equilibrium, and it's in box four. It's in box number four. Questions on that? I think that's where I'm going to stop. That's going to stop. That's 30 minutes. 30 minutes of notes. I'll start. I'll start here tomorrow. Oh, your question?